I started boxing in 1976, and it was Muhammad Ali that really made me go into boxing. I just, I just love him. Then I was small. I was a very young boy then. I, I love Muhammad Ali. I said Muhammad Ali. I said I want to be a musician or a boxer. And my dad did said I should go and read medicine or, uh, law, or law. I said, no, I want to be a very popular man. I want people to know me like fella. I want to be like Muhammad Ali. So my dad was like, no, over his dead body, but it happens anyway. I boxed, my mother was very encouraging. And when I was coming back, I won, I won a gold medal in the Junior category of 1979, National Sport Festival, Tag Oluyole 79. And I went to fight in the senior in 81. So my, my boxing career has been on like that. It has been so rosy. My first fight was against Falosho Jacobs. And it was for the new newcomers boxing championship. And the man beat me so much that I, I could not I could not sleep the next day. Or the coach, Coach Asikihoria said, because of my courage, he gave me a boxing shoe, a boxing pint, and a vest. Did you think of quitting boxing when you lost that first fight? Did did it did you ever think of quitting? No, no, no. It was my mom that was so worried because my eyes were all swollen. I can't come out in the morning, I was like well, it is where. Which will be your fondest fight? I mean, the fight that you look back and you say, oh, I am proud I did this, that I won this fight. The fight you will live to remember all your life. That was my quarterfinal fight in the Los Angeles Olympics against such a pack of Korea. Now, I could see some of the punches I used to send to knock out my opponent, which I did not send that day of the fight, the day of that fight. But even though I won that fight, it took them about six minutes to, to announce the result of the fight. But after that fight, there's a sports company that came up to me and said, they want to give me their product. They were all black people. I said, black brother, this is for you. You know, they gave, they gave me transfer shoes and stuff like that. I, they are happy that I proved a point. And when I came back home, the reception was, was awesome, I was happy. Does it still hurt you to this day, losing in the Olympics uh, quarterfinals? I think I put it behind me right now. I don't think so. Because the, the two people who won gold and silver, but the people who have beaten in the pre-Olympics at the Commonwealth Games. The boy from Canada and the other guy from uh, Ireland. Okay, let us talk about the fight you had with Joe Lassisi back then. You lost that fight. You had boasted that you were going to win the fight in two rounds, but uh, you eventually lost the fight. And I remember after that fight, you, your post-match, uh, post-fight conference, actually, um, you, you said um, it's like Jula Sisi used uh, some kind of charm on you and that you never believed in charm, but that after the fight, you felt you were being converted. At some point, you said when you were fighting him, you were seeing like double, you were seeing three or four of him, and you just that you couldn't move your arm, you couldn't move your legs, you couldn't move your body, even though you got your arm, one of your arms broken in the fight. You know, when I was coming from a background where we don't really believe in those kind of stuff, I never knew it was the way they were doing their own professional boxing in Nigeria. I was just coming for the amateur rank. And the day, the night I fought Joe Lassisi, a lot of things happened. Coach Obisa Wakba is still alive. He came to me when I was about going to the ring. And he said, he advised me not to shake hands with one man. As I was going there, the man walked up to me, I shook my hand. And Obisa said, Sherry, I said, don't shake that man. Well, me, I don't, I don't believe in those stuff. I don't know what it meant, but he didn't say anything to me. That was all he said, don't shake the man. I went to the ring while we were fighting. The water my coach was giving me was hot. It was hot water. And my mouthpiece, he kept forgetting my mouthpiece. 
I would say, Coach, my truth guide. And sometimes I try to say, Coach, I, I think in the, round six, in the sixth round, I said, hey, Coach, I'm not seeing this man. I told Charles Monkolo, my team, I said, Charles, I'm not seeing this guy. He said, don't worry, you will see him. So I was, as I was fighting, I see Joel Asisi. I see him, but he's blunt. Sometimes I see like six people standing in front of me. I don't know which one is this guy. Then at the time I broke my arm, I quit in the eighth round with the second south. Round eight, I raised up my hand and said, I can no longer fight. I'll call it a quit. You don't think he got so prepared for this fight and that he beat you because you had boasted before the fight that you were going to beat him in round two. So he just got himself very prepared and uh, eventually beat you. No. See, that, those were things I never knew in boxing. Then I was just cutting, cutting my infant tooth in professional boxing. And I know how they operate. But do you know, the third day when I came back from loot, I was in the hospital. I was putting the cast in my right hand. A boy, a boy of about 16 came up to me and said, as you go back of the sports hall, that there's a fire, he prepared. They told him not to make the fire. Make sure the fire don't quench. That I should go and pack those arches and go and pour them in the Babish River, in the, in the, in the sea, sorry. That if I don't do it, anytime I fight, what happened to me will happen to me again. And I did. And I asked him, how much were you paid? He said he was giving 50 copper then. He was giving 50 copper. I said, well, thank God. And that was how the whole thing happened. And years, years, years passed when I I gone to the US and fought. I fought, I fought for the California title, I fought for the Junior World title, which I did not win. I fought good fights in the, in the States. I fought uh, this guy from, uh, from Washington, which everybody is so afraid of. After the fight, Donald Trump gave us $2,000 each, you know, so by the time I came back to Nigeria in 92, 1994, Hunter Clay walked up to me at the Carter Best restaurant in the National Stadium and said he has a confession to make. I said, what is your confession? That he, Hunter Clay, took Lassisi to a place called Isaleko. I don't know the place. That whatever they did was not to kill me or to do anything, but just to bring down my popularity that I was too popular. That they just want me to go down. I told Dr. Clay then, I said, I've forgiven you. Because he said I should forgive you. I said, if God can forgive us, who am I not to forgive you? Go and buy me something to eat. He bought me food. I ate and that was it. Yeah, because Lassi is not a boxer. Even up to date, he's not a boxer. He doesn't know how to box. But bo boxing is not just coming and fighting like a bull. He must have some scientific approach to boxing. He's not a boxer. And if I see him, I will still tell him he's not a boxer and he doesn't know how to box. Boxing is, is more than what we see. You must have your ring craft. You must master the ring. Show what you can do in the ring. That is why they say, I am Nigeria Mohammed Ali, because I try to be like Ali. That is just raw. Very raw, and it's still raw to tomorrow. <laughs> he's my friend, but uh, he's not a boxer. Let us now look at the state of Nigerian boxing today. It's, it's really gone down. In the last Olympics, we didn't do well at all. Most of our boxers, if not all of them, went out in, in the first round. Things are really bad. What is your take on the state of Nigerian boxing today? Boxing today is not what it used to be at a time when we were boxing. At a time we were boxing, every competition we were being sponsored to attend this competition. And that improved our performance in boxing. 
virtually every competition, World Championship, World Cup, Commonwealth Championship, Commonwealth Games, we were always there. Kadi Kandova in Cuba, Nigeria bosses were rated very high. I was ranked number four before the Olympics. Peter Kujikwashi won the silver medal, I was ranked number eight. He was not ranked among the first five. It was me, Shaswokulo, and Roland Amorui because Amorui has won a bronze medal in the World Boxing Championship in, in Munich. So I was ranked number four before the Olympic Games. So every competition we were there, that was why Nigeria box, boxing then was so high. And after the Olympics, a lot of countries were inviting Nigeria boxers to come and fight their boxers in their country. But it's not so now. Now they'll tell you there's no, no money for sponsorship and stuff like that. So and people who are managing boxing now does not have the interest of this game. Who are the people who are managing boxing? What are their pedigrees? Where are they coming from? How many competitions have they been able to bring to boxing? How many tournaments have they been able to sponsor? How many sponsors have, have they been able to get? These are the problems we are facing in boxing. But now the election is coming. I just hope that anybody that comes as the president and the members of the federation should have the interest of boxing at the back of their heart. What do you think went wrong for us at the last Olympics when our boxers just suddenly crashed out in the first round? Why we could not perform in the Olympic was a technical problem. Technically, our coaches were not sound. In the Commonwealth Games, we were not sound. In the Olympic, we were not sound. When the coaches talk to athletes, there are ways you talk to your, your fighters. As a coach, there are things you should do. There are things you shouldn't do. You must apply psychology of coaching whenever you, 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 you take charge of uh, boxing as a boxing coach. You don't need to shout at an athlete. If an athlete come, walk up to you and say, Coach, I'm not training today. Do not shut him down. Find out why he doesn't want to train and see what you can do as a coach to make him train. But in the camp, they shout, they curse your parents, the coaches are saying now, they insult your parents, they shout at you, they don't even want to know where you are coming from. But these are athletes who have family at home. They have wives and children who bring them to camp and start treating them like kids, treat them like a father. Um, these are the problems I'm having with the coaches. They will tell me, Sherry, you are not the only one who went to America. I said I went to America to study boxing. I did not go there to study anything. I read boxing and I studied boxing. Right from Bidin, Afuze Tenka, College of Physical Education, all of us, we attended the Bermuda Boxing School. Don't you think you're part of the problem since you were at one time a national coach as well? So people would say you were part of the problem. Every boxer I coached in the Commonwealth Games, in the All-Africa Games, they all won medals for Nigeria. In 2006 Melbourne Commonwealth Games, I went to Abuja to tell the minister that we don't have boxers. He said, do you have boxers? I said, yes. And I brought in my boxers, and two of them won a silver and a bronze at the Melbourne Commonwealth Games, and that was the only medal Nigeria won. That was the only medal. Nelson Bulon and uh, Adura Lalei. Because these are boxers that were rejected. And I told them, let's start training. I started giving them a program. Because Nelson, uh, uh, Emmanuel Isorite, these were all my boxers that captained the national team and won Afro Asia gold, won Afro Asia gold, and won All Africa game gold. He went to the Olympics and got to the quarterfinal in, uh, in Athens. So I, am, I'm, I know what to do when it comes to coaching. There are ways you talk to your athletes. There are things they need as a coach that you need to provide for these athletes. If you, can, you must play the role of a father, a brother, and a friend as a coach, which they think I am overdoing. 
which is the best for the national team. Recently, um, you know, it was all over the media that um, you had not been treated well by the government, that you have been owed money and all of that. Well, I, I am a staff of the National Sport Commission. In, 19, in 1985, when I was leaving for the United States of America to pursue my boxing career, I applied for a leave of absence without pay. And the letter given to me was that I should notify the commission upon my return for re-estatement, which I did. And in 1995, I was re-estated back to my job. And the letter was signed by the then DG of the National Sport Commission, Chief Patrick Keji. So I have not been paid. I've been running up to Abuja everywhere to just to find out why are my salary, why is my salary not paid? Not paid since 1995. 1995. So the association said that it's possible for that they will be paying me pending when they ratify my case. Then in 2003, the DG Chief Patrick Keji invited me to his office in Abuja that he wants me to take charge of boxing for the All Africa Games, that Koja, 2003. In the meeting where Chief, Chief Patrick Keji, myself, Alex Oyewunwa, Tijani Yusuf, the director of sports, and Wing Commander Mwezi, and he said, give me what you want and to make boxing improve, I will support you. And I told him all the things I needed, and he provided it. And he said, tell me how many medals you are going to win. I said, I'll give you four gold, two silver, two bronze, which I delivered. Go and check the record, which I delivered. And he said, as I'm leaving for Cuba, before I come back from Cuba, that everything would have been taken care of. He bought my reinstatement and my salary. Until when I came back from Cuba, nothing happened until after after the All Africa Games, I keep going to Abuja to remind the DG I have no option. And as my association said, they stopped their subvention that they can no longer pay my salary. I have no other option than to go to court. I seek a redress in court. And I even went back to a KG to, to meet with uh, the legal advisor, Mrs. Small, who took me to the, to, to the DG. I told him that this boy is not wrong. If, if you are aggrieved, you can seek a redress in the court of law because he said I wrote the House of Representatives about my case, which they queried the sports commission. So I went to court. About three years into the case, I was issued another letter of reinstatement and offer of appointment signed by the DG, Dr. Imo Sadamu. You have been offered an appointment as a national boxing coach. Stamped, satisfied through copy. They stamped it. You have been reinstated back to your job. If ever so, so whatever date. Stamped and signed by the DG, satisfied through copy. So when I got to court, I asked my lawyer, what is satisfied through copy? He said it means it's an authentic but now, after giving us ruling, at the, after giving me ruling, sorry, at the Federal High Court, Sport Commission appealed the ruling of the Federal High Court. Today we are at the Court of Appeal, which they don't show up. Every time the case comes up, they will send a letter that they have a meeting. They cannot come, they show I joined the case. So. It has been like that. Nothing has happened. Do you feel betrayed at all by Nigeria? I think I'm very betrayed because I spent all my life as the time I would have used to study, to any other things, I use it to represent this country, to project the image and the name of this country. But in the end, I don't have anything to show for it. Nothing. I am so bitter because 
I have trained so many boxers for Nigeria. I have a boxing club. And all the boxers now, they are now boxing outside the country. Most times I invite them back home during the, the Melbourne Games. I invite them out of their home to go to the Commonwealth Games. And they, two of them won medals. But nobody recognizes me. I said, those boys, they don't even have the white feet. Like what I asked the council to shape at the Kekeji. I said, how do you want me to eat? How do you, you don't want me to pay my children's school fee. Why are you appealing? How much is my salary that you're appealing? How much? How much is the salary anyway? Do I know? My salary is not even up to 130,000. It's about 120,000. 120,000. I'm a level 12 officer. You know, so it's been like that. But I'm very disappointed in Patrick Keji. I am disappointed because he's a sportsman. We sportsmen, we have a constituency. We have a constituency where we are coming from. We should be able to look out for one another. You don't use your position to victimize anybody because God is God. And he, the, 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 the funniest thing is that he attends my church. He's a member of Redeemed Christian Church of God. He does for redeem church. How do I eat? How do I pay my children's school fee? It is by, by the grace of God and my church. So tell me, how are you surviving today? I survive by my friends, friends like you, sports writers, my church. And that's it. My church is always there. And sports writers, they are always there for me. That is how I survive. Anything I need, I cry to the church, they give to me. But I am surprised at a fellow sportsman treating his own friend like this. Because we, we used to live together and we have never had quarrel. But I don't know what happened. In spite of all that has happened, would you accept if you were offered to coach Nigeria again? Yes. I will say because now I know they will pay me. They will not say they will not pay me. They will pay me because I need the money to help myself and my family. I will go.